Hi everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys today? I am bringing you a really fun video. We're gonna be making this adorable birdhouse. Isn't it so cute? It is basically a milk carton. <laughs> and I will show you how to put it together today. So it is super cute. Um, this bundle that I will be using, I'm using these beautiful designer series paper and this stamp set here called Friendly Hello is available for free with a $100 purchase from my online store. So once you spend $100, you can pick this as one of the levels. You get this gorgeous paper and this beautiful stamp set. So definitely check it out. I love giving free with purchase and it is good until the end of February 2022 so don't miss out definitely check that out I will be using this bundle a lot this week so check out my other videos so that you can see other things that you can do with this gorgeous bundle of products let's go ahead and get started on our cute birdhouse it is kind of a long process so I hope that you will have time to stick with me um, because it is well worth it so we're gonna start with a piece of crumb cake cardstock that is 10 and a half by seven inches. So it's 10 and a half this way, seven inches this way. And we're gonna start at the 10 and a half inch mark. And we're gonna, we're gonna score at half inch, at three inches, at five and a half inches, and at eight inches. So that's half inch, three, five and a half, and eight. And then we're gonna rotate it so that we have the seven inch side. And we're gonna also score it at half an inch. And then we're gonna do two inches and then four and a half inches. So you're left with two thin panels, one on each side. And then you have four boxes that are square, two rows of those and a half of that right there at the top. So little rectangles. So let's go ahead and do one more score line. I'm gonna move my board out of the way temporarily so that I can um, show you. We're going to be doing um, these little peaks here. So we're gonna um, we're gonna do this one and this one right here. I'm gonna mark with my ruler if I can find it. Here we go. So we're gonna find the half inch mark, which is the four and a quarter inch. And we're gonna just give it a little mark up here. Of course, I have to get in the right panel. So we're gonna mark four and a quarter inches. We're gonna do the same thing here. Four and a quarter. Let me burnish so that we can see these score lines a lot better. And then we will use those marks that I just made to do um, a triangular or an angled um, burnish. So let's go ahead and go down these sides here. And let's get this one. I think I missed that one. All right, so now that we have those little marks in there, we can see these lines a lot better. And we're gonna lay our ruler at that mark. And then this corner here, I'm gonna use my stylus from my um, Simply Scored board that we just used. And I'm gonna go from that mark to the corner. And that's gonna make um, little triangles, see? Right there. We're gonna do the same thing right here. So we're gonna just lay that to, from corner to corner. We'll do this one on this side. Same thing, perfect. All right, let me put my stylus back on my Simply Scoreboard so it'll be there next time I need it. And we will go ahead and mark those out. All right, I'm gonna show you how to cut your piece. So you have these squares down here at the bottom. Those are going to be the bottom flaps. This is your top and then this is your middle section. So what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting on this end here and we are actually going to cut this flap completely away. All right. So this long piece, just that one section and I angle cut here. I'm also going to angle cut here. Those are the only pieces that get thrown away. 
Now we're gonna angle cut on the sides here up to that score mark. And I like doing it on either side of the score line because it helps give you the room that you need when you are gluing and you have all these layers for them to lay nice and flat. So I'm just doing a slight angle going down to a finer point at the top. You'll be able to see in a minute when I lay down my piece here. So we'll go ahead and do that one. And then I'm just gonna angle cut slightly on this edge right there. Okay, so we'll get rid of those and I'm gonna lay that down for you to see. So you can see I just cut little wedges from the bottom to the top and then slight angles on either side. So we have to glue this together, and to do that, we will put some glue on this side and glue it together. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and glue all our panels of our designer series paper onto our box. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab my silicone mat, and you can see how pretty the other side is as well. We're gonna use the green side. It's our granny apple green leaf, and I just thought that that was so pretty to use on these panels. So let's go ahead and put them down. Doing these little 3D boxes are probably my favorite kind of um, project. I really love doing three-dimensional projects. I think they're so much fun. Um, I enjoy um, doing, I enjoy doing cards too, but this is just a challenge for me. And I really love creating boxes that fit the items that I'm gonna put in them. And this box here will actually be able to be opened without destroying it, which is always nice, right? And um, I'll show you that. This ribbon undoes itself and the roof comes off and then you can put some treats inside. So it's a, it's a decent size box. I wanted it to be rather large. I wanted it to resemble a little birdhouse so I couldn't make it too small. There we go. All right, so there are our panels. that we will be putting on the sides. Now, I am going to be um, cutting out on this one right here, our window, okay? So this is gonna be our little birdhouse window. So this is gonna be our front. So I'm gonna grab the smallest circle from my layering circle dies. So this is the littlest one. So we will grab it out. And this is gonna be laid right here and we're gonna run it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. So let me grab that and I will also grab a little piece of washi tape that we will use to hold down that ring and keep it from moving. So this is like a painter's tape or um, something like that. And I'm just gonna press it into place here. Well, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> this one might've lost its sticky. I do use them over and over again, but there we go. Um, so let's go ahead and get the machine into place. Move my little birdhouse out of the way. All right. So we're gonna get our platform, which is number one. Number two is when we use any steel dies, we use number two. Number three is our cutting plate. You see how well loved it is. There's number three. And then we have another number three that's gonna go on top. So we're gonna put this in here and I'm gonna be pulling these pieces up and sliding them in. And the only one that really we really need is this one. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that clear plate through and crank it right over the top of that circle that we need. So that is it. It does make a little impression, as you can see on the bottom, which is kind of like a little, a little seal, you know? I think it's perfectly fine. 
And there is our little birdhouse circle. I'm going to put that to the side and pop out this extra um, adhesive. Um, not extra adhesive, my extra circle. Maybe I'll use it on another project. Probably not. But I definitely want to put my die away before I lose it because it is super easy to lose these things, right? All right, so let's get that out of the way. And we'll move our die cut machine. I love this die cut machine because it folds up really easily. It's nice and sturdy. And it's well worth the money. Celebration is always a great time to purchase yours if you have been looking to get a die cut machine because you do get free products for every $50 that you spend. All right, so let's go ahead and glue a window sheet behind the circle because I don't want it to be open where you can the treats can get out. So I've cut a small piece here. It's one and a half inches by one and a half inches. And I'm gonna just glue that right there over the top of that circle. So we're just gonna go around it. And then I'm just kind of forming a square so that all of that window sheet will be um, adhered. There we go. And as you can see, we're just gonna push it down Give it a second. I'm gonna flip it over and make sure that um, nothing is sticking out. And then we're gonna go ahead and put adhesive on this seam right here. I'm gonna move my mat so that you can see it right on that piece. So we'll go ahead and put some adhesive on the seam and then I'm gonna get my mat out of the way and we will glue this into place right there. Give that a nice press. All right, so here is our box. Now we're gonna turn in the sides. So this is gonna be the last flap. I want that little ring to show. I want it to be nice and finished here in the front. I don't want these edges to show. So I want this to be the last one. So let's go ahead and do the sides first. So this one's just gonna get put in, right? And we're gonna make sure that it fits in there. And we're gonna go ahead and put some adhesive on this piece that is going to be laid on top of it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna just hold that in place just for a second. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put adhesive on this flap right here. That is going to be put in next. And now I'm gonna, before I glue this last one, I'm just gonna put it down so that it gets nice and square. And I'm gonna actually press on the bottom of my box to glue those panels in. And that also helps to square my box. So now that it's nice and square, I'm gonna go ahead and put adhesive on my final piece. And if it bothers you to have that ring showing, you can always put another piece of this beautiful designer series paper right over the top and no one will know that it's even there, but it doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of cool, actually. It's kind of like a seal I could sign in there and say, made by Kelly. All right, so there is our box. So now we're gonna turn these little triangle pieces in, and then this becomes our top of our birdhouse, okay? So I have a piece here for the roof. It's our pool party and it's three by five inches and I have embossed it with this amazing timber embossing folder. So I've used that and run it through and I have a wood grain on there. So I think it's super pretty. Before we attach it onto the top, we're gonna use our silicone mat and our wet glue again. And we are going to attach these really pretty scallops. Well, these came from the scallop contour dies right there. So I just used the end of that second rectangle. And I think it turned out rather nice. 
So let's go ahead and adhere those ends onto our roof. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half so I can find my center. And let's go ahead and just give that a nice crease so that I know that that's the flap of my house, right? I definitely want to have that creased first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put adhesive right along this piece here, right on the other side of those little dots. And then I'm just gonna lay my um, pool party over the top and I'm gonna pull it back until I just see those dots and press that into place. So there's that one. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna put adhesive right here on the side of these dots. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna drag and pull until I just see those dots because I think they're so pretty. I definitely want to see them. And there we go and just press and then that is our little scalloped edged roof isn't it super cute <laughs> i think so okay i have already cut out our um flowers stamped and cut those out and i have stamped and cut out our bird that goes on our house i did those ahead of time because i didn't want to take the time to um kind of get that part done but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and stamp my hope you have the best birthday banner which is what we're going to use across the front of our birdhouse right like that so we're going to go ahead and stamp that all right and I'm gonna I don't need to have it on this mat it just happens to be on it I just want to stamp it where I can see and I'm just going to do the best I can right so there it is. I'm going to trim that down. So let me go ahead and get my stamp cleaner out and clean my stamp real quick so I can get that out of the camera and out of our way. All right. I keep mine in an old stamp case. Keeps it moist for me so that I can use it over and over. So I'm going to trim this down. I have a small trimmer. Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these. It was actually something that I earned um, when I uh, signed up to become a demonstrator. So, but you can definitely find these little mini guillotine cutters on Amazon. So definitely check it out so that you can get yours. So I just wanted to trim that down a little bit. And now I'm going to use my paper snips. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give a snip right down the center. And then I'm going to go from this corner to that snip. And then the same thing on the other side from this corner to that snip. And then that's how you get that little banner end. Same thing on the other side. Stamp cut right there in the center and then join my pieces to that center cut. And now we are going to curl this. So let me go ahead and get that going. So in order to curl it, I'm just gonna run it along my bone folder. And when I do that, it's just like if you curl ribbon, right? It breaks down the fibers and have that nice curl, but I don't want it to stay like this. I want these ends to now come forward. So I'm gonna bring my bone folder to the other side. See how it gave it that nice little wave? I'm gonna do the same thing here. And now I have this really cute waved banner. And I'm just gonna sit it off to the side until we get our roof on, okay? All right, so now for our roof. I'm gonna use my Fiskars um, 1 8 inch cutters and I'm gonna use this as my guide and I'm gonna lay it onto my little half inch seam here and I'm gonna punch holes. And it is a little bit hard to do, guys. You do need a little muscle. <laughs> but you just kind of hold it in place and you're gonna dip your um, hole, you know, just slide it in place and get your hole puncher in that hole. And give it a nice little cut there. All right, and let's do the other one. 
there's that one. And we'll do the same thing. We just have to slide it into place. You know, we're gonna do the best we can. If it's a little crooked, if it's a little off, it's okay. We're, all we can do is the best we can do, right? So there's our second one. Okay, so there's our little holes and they are on both sides. And they may be a little crooked, but as long as we can get our ribbon through them, that's all that matters. I can hold it again and give it another. No one's gonna see this part. It's not gonna show. So it's okay if it's a little bit wonky. Now, we're gonna do our little roof and we definitely want that to be pretty. So we're gonna line this up. We're definitely gonna make sure that we're lined up the same way. Yeah, that this, and we're gonna go ahead and center it like this. And then we are going to punch the holes on this. Now I made this guide with just a half inch piece of scrap cardstock, and I figured out about how wide I wanted my holes to be. And I just punched them with the hole punch. And then that was my guide for my piece. And I just can reuse it over and over again, just punching in those same two holes. So there, this is what people are gonna see, the roof. So that's the one that is the prettiest. So don't really worry about how your little holes look, if they look crooked, as long as you can get your ribbon through them, that's really all that they're there for. So um, don't sweat that too much. So I have two pieces of ribbon here because when I um, first tied the ribbon here on this side, it just looked naked and I thought it needed a ribbon on this side. So I added another one and just used a mini glue dot to attach it, but it can be pulled off easily right there. So um, definitely if you don't want two ribbons, you can just use the one on the one side of your house. That's fine too. So let's go ahead and start. The ribbons are 12 inches for the one that I pulled through the holes and 10 inches for the one that I just tied the bow with. So here is the one that I'm just gonna tie the bow. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then set it to the side. I'm gonna give it a little pull and then I kind of play with my ends here until I get them how I want them, as small, as big. That looks good to me. I'm gonna set this little ribbon to the side. With these, when it's time to decorate, we'll be ready to go. All right, so here's this one. We're gonna go ahead and put our treats inside, whatever we want them to be. You can put them in a little cellophane bag. You could put maybe um, some chocolates, mini miniature cookies, um, jewelry, you know, whatever you want to give people. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze that together again. And we're going to put our little roof on the top. And we're going to match those little holes up as best we can. Like I said, the most important thing is that the, um, that the bird, that the ribbons can go through the holes. And so we are going to start on this side. And I'm going to use that um, point there of, the, of my ribbon. I'm going to kind of just turn it like that. And I'm gonna push it through one side, like so, and hopefully it's gonna make it through to the other side. I can also use my stylus or my um, pokey tool here and try and help myself get it through there as best I can. The stylus end works really good because it doesn't harm your ribbon. This pointy one can scar up your ribbon a little bit, but I probably should grab my stylus. Let me grab that. It'll be a little bit easier and a little more gentle. There we go. So now I can grab my ribbon through that side. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push it through. I'm just going to kind of find my point here and find my holes and use my stylus to push it through. Come on, get in there. Just something to grab onto so that I can pull it through. All right, there we go. So once you have your ribbon through, you just wanna pull on this section until you get your two points even and then go ahead and pull on your um, ribbon piece. Isn't it so cute? And then we're gonna go ahead and tie a bow and then we'll trim those ends because they get a little rough when you push them through with your stylus or your scissor. 
So there is that one. And I'm going to pull on those ends and make my ribbon a lot daintier and smaller. And when I'm happy with how it looks, like I am right now, I will bring in my scissors. I'm going to grab my ribbon cutting scissors. And I will trim the ends of my ribbon to make it pretty, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do on this side is I'm gonna grab a mini glue dot. They come on a roll. There's all different kinds of adhesive, right guys? And they all have their own purpose. So we're gonna grab this mini glue dot here. We're gonna attach it onto this knot on the back of the ribbon. I'm gonna pull that off. And then we're gonna glue that to this side, on this side of the ribbon so that we have that pretty ribbon on both sides. So now here's my little front of my birdhouse. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this little banner like so. Well, how am I gonna actually glue that? Well, I'm actually gonna put some adhesive onto this piece here. And I know it's super thin and you're thinking, how is that even gonna grab? But trust me, this glue is super strong and it just works. So we're gonna set my banner right on those pieces of glue and let it sit there. I'm just gonna hold it right for right now, just for a second and hold it in place, make sure that it's centered and just hold on to it just for a second till it sets. And it actually does a beautiful job and it holds on to that pretty banner. So that is there. Let's go ahead and put our um, dimensionals on the back of our bird. So we'll put two here on the flowers and maybe one up here. And then on these, we will do two on each of these flowers. And then I'm gonna use some mini dimensionals on the rest of our bird here because he has some smaller spots that I wanna kinda get those dimensionals onto. All right, so let's go ahead and attach our bird onto our piece. Almost finished. All right, so let's go ahead and put him on. When we're happy with his placement, maybe I didn't need that mini glue dot on the end there. He's kind of hanging off. Let me pull that one off. But the other ones are on there good. I'm gonna move it up a little. I don't want that. It doesn't, I don't want that covering the hole as quite as much. There we go. That looks better. So this one we didn't need. And then we will need both of these. So let's go ahead and pull these off. and we will attach our flowers to the side. So let's do it like this. We'll put that one there and this one on this side. What do you think? I think it turned out really great. There's my two birdhouses. Very happy with them. I hope that you've enjoyed watching me put this together. I certainly have enjoyed making it for you. Um, I appreciate you watching my channel. Please share my video with people that you may think might be interested or people that like to do other crafts. A lot of times they do like to stamp, even though they've never seen stamping before. And you can introduce them to it. Um, leave me comments below. Thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate the likes. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Check out my blog at inkyhandswarmhearts.com. I will link it in the description below. Subscribe to my channel so that you will hear about new videos as I post them. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you spending time with me if you have made it till the end. Thank you so very much. And uh, thank you for hanging out with me today. Um, this is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping.